everyone, welcome back to our channel. Bex here today to do a review of The Library Book by Susan Orlean. This is one that has been on my TBR shelf for a while and Les actually picked it out for me to read as part of the Shelf Sisters series round two. If you're not sure what that is, I'll link the video for that so you can get a better explanation. But basically what that means is Les picked this book out for me to read. I have to read it and then do a standalone review for it. That's just part of the deal. So here's me fulfilling that side of the deal. Before I get into the actual content of this book, I just want to focus for a little bit on the design of this book because it is designed to look like an older book. It kind of has that feeling. It's a naked hardback. This cover certainly reflects a little bit of an older style. However, I would say the spine is a bit more fanciful than you would see on older books generally, but it looks really nice on the shelves. The back also pretty simple, nothing spectacular there, but on the inside flap here, we've got the summary of the book. Uh, but it's designed to look like an old style novel. And the back of the book has a picture of the author and also one of those little slips where old library cards would go. So I just really enjoy that they went that little extra mile with the design of this book. Now to talk about what's actually in here. I would think of this as sort of a hub and spokes setup where the hub is a massive fire that happened at the LA Central Public Library in April 1986 and then the author takes different things related to this massive fire and spends time focusing on those different pieces kind of spreading them out throughout the book. I would say some of those pieces are very directly connected to the fire and others are sort of related tangentially to it and sort of these little tangents that she goes down. I'd say about 80% of this book is focused on libraries and not just the LA Central Public Library, but libraries in general. And then I'd say about 20% of this book is focused very specifically on fire and things related to book burnings and who set the fire in this particular case. For the part of this book that talks about libraries, she starts off by reflecting on memories uh, from her childhood of going to the library with her mother and how much that meant to her. She also talks about the history of libraries in general. She talks about a lot of history for the LA library, kind of from its original existence all the way up until present day. And she does spend a fair amount of time talking to different employees in the various uh, departments of the library. And I found this really interesting because the LA Central Public Library, which is the main library, has so many extra departments. I think a, a lot of people, when they think of a library, they think, okay, books, movies, magazines, whereas something like the LA Library or other ones that are uh, serving such a large city, they have other massive collections at the LA Central Public Library, for example, they have collections of musical scores that organizations are allowed to borrow. They also have a massive map collection, and that was actually one of my favorite parts of the book because each section that we focus on, each department, we get to know a little bit about the people that work there, maybe some of the patrons that they see on a regular basis, and I I'm a big fan of maps. And so hearing about their massive map collection just really brought me a lot of joy. They focused on a particular person named CJ who is autistic and deaf and his special interest is maps. And he comes in every so often to assist the librarians in categorizing this massive map collection that they were given that was found in this man's home after he passed away. And just how that, that area of the library brings certain people together just as other areas of the library might, but I just found that part of it really very cool to read about. I would say the author also does a really lovely job of sort of describing the feel of the library to you as she's walking through it. So even though there are some pictures in here, we don't have a very detailed photo or layout of the library. And so she kind of describes it to you as she's walking through it. And I thought that was a nice touch because it helps you feel more in tune with the story. Moving on to the fire aspect of it, she spends a, a chapter talking about how the fire kind of grew and everything that happened with that. It burned for over seven hours and it destroyed completely over 400,000 
pieces of material, whether that was books, magazines, photos, etc. There was hundreds of thousands more that were partially damaged and they attempted to save them. And then of course you have the library building itself, which was massively damaged of not only from the fire, but the amount of water that they had to use to try and stop the fire and also drilling that the fire department did to try and keep the fire from spreading because it was so hot, it was so intense. She describes it very thoroughly in here with all of the right terms, but it was one of those fires that you, if you are a, somebody who works in the fire department, you'll remember it for the rest of your life because it was just so hot and so massive. After the fire was finally put out, she spends some time talking about the employees who were there and how just devastated everybody felt. Some of them uh, that she interviewed just talked about the depression that they were in. Somebody said that it actually was a, a very big factor in him getting divorced from his wife because it just put him in such a bad place. And you can see how much these people love this library. Not only the people that worked there, but the community and, and the fundraising that they did. One of the weirdest parts to read in this book was about a telethon, a 24-hour telethon that they put on in order to help raise money for the library. And she was mentioning the different acts that were happening. And it was, that would have been a wild thing to watch. So cringy, so wild, but it worked. They raised money, so that was just a random little thing that I enjoyed hearing about. She also spends some time talking about Harry Peak, which is the man who was suspected of starting the fire, the suspected arsonist. And I do feel like when this book was originally sold, it was sort of advertised as going to be about the mystery of who set this fire. And so my expectations were a little off. I thought it was going to be much more about this mystery, sort of this true crime aspect with some information about libraries, but it's definitely way more about libraries and how amazing they are than it is about the true crime fire aspect of the story. Don't get me wrong, it's still very interesting and she follows the case up to you know where we are now and kind of talks about how, how things ended up and the different theories that are out there because arson is one of the hardest things to prosecute because it's so hard to prove because a lot of times your evidence has burned. Uh, so I appreciated getting an in-depth look at Harry Peak and what happened with his case but don't go into this book thinking that it is a huge focus of it. The final thing that I want to mention about this book is that the author does some deeper reflections on libraries and society. There's one quote in here that says books are a sort of cultural DNA and as somebody that loves books and loves libraries I really enjoyed that one specific line. She also talks about how libraries can bring different groups of people together, uh, how they survive through social and political upheaval that sort of intertwining of life and knowledge and I appreciated how in-depth she was able to get with it and and it made me reflect on the libraries that I've gone to growing up and how important libraries are as a place that is free for everyone and because libraries are open to everyone it is a place where anyone can go and see who we are as people who we are as human beings and how libraries deal and are at the center of a lot of community-wide issues. So if you are someone that loves your local library, I think you would really enjoy this book. It gives you a chance to reflect on what libraries bring to the community and all the different things that they can do. To less, you asked me to read this book and review it, but also tell you if I think you would enjoy it, and I absolutely think you will. I know you'll enjoy the extra reflections on libraries and what they are to society. I don't think you necessarily care so much about the true crime aspect of it, but that's fine because that's not the real main focus of this. I think you'll really have a good time with it. If you've read the library book, please let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. We can also gush about how fantastic our local libraries and librarians are. As always, all of our links are in the down bar. You can go check those out if you feel so inclined. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you later.